Hmm, what should I call this feature? Now hear this? Stick it in your ear? Well, no, because it's not about stuff that I necessarily want you guys to listen to. It's just stuff that I've listened to over the past month, so it's not really recommendations necessarily. Uh, Tom's monthly playlist? Hey, I'm open to suggestions. You got any ideas? Toss them at me, huh? And welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Yes, I will be starting probably two new monthly features this month. Uh, yes, I'm probably crazy. But actually, these two features are going to be relatively uh, low prep. You know, not a lot of work involved with them. That's the only reason I'm taking these on, honestly. And this one is going to be a very simple concept. I'm not sure what I'm going to call it yet. Uh, right now, I'm just calling it Tom's Monthly Playlist. Uh, if you guys, as I said, if you guys have any better ideas for it, throw them at me. Uh, this one's going to be a very, very simple concept. I'm just going to be talking about the stuff that I've listened to over the past month uh, for fun. You know, the stuff that doesn't have anything to do with any of the other stuff that I do on my YouTube channel. I, just, I figured, you know, maybe you guys are curious about what I listen to for fun. Because honestly, I think you, you need to, uh, especially if you're a music YouTuber like I am, I'm one of the small scale music YouTubers, but still, you got to listen to stuff just for the heck of it, just for fun. You know, I, I, I don't know how... Um, uh, Mark at Spectrum Pulse or uh, Anthony Fantano or John at ARTV. I don't know how you guys find the time or if you guys find the time to listen to stuff just for fun and not for your YouTube channel. Uh, it's I figure I have to do that, otherwise it's going to take a lot of the enjoyment out of music, honestly. So, yeah, as I said, uh, that's what this feature is going to be all about. So why don't I just get on with it, stop wasting time, and uh, tell you guys, uh, if in case you're curious about what I listen to just for fun, uh, for the month of January. First of all is one that I, uh, this is actually the only one that I got f off the freebie shelf at House of Records. Uh, and hey, hey, what's better price than free, right? And this is one that I actually tweeted about, oh gosh, it's probably been about two months ago now. It is a genre of music that I had never tried before. Uh, yes, there are probably a handful of genres out there that I have never sampled. And this one I'm kind of glad I did. This is uh, Japanese taiko drumming. It is a taiko drum band called Kodo. And it's uh, this is the uh, the name of the album is Ibuki, and it's very very cool. Uh, and not only is it a Japanese genre of music, but the CD is actually from Japan. Uh, no Obi strip, unfortunately. That was that was too much to ask for with it being in the freebies bin. But yeah, this is just fascinating stuff. If you like your stuff uh, heavy on the percussion side, give Taiko drumming a try. It's really cool. And one of the misconceptions I had, I was kind of expecting this album to be kind of boring because. If the genre is taiko drumming, you think that it's going to be drums and nothing else, which I don't know why I thought that, because honestly, if it were nothing but, uh, you know, drums, it would be rather atonal music and it would probably get boring really fast. But no, this uh, these uh, songs have more instruments surrounding. I mean, the drums are in the forefront, obviously. But yes, very, very enjoyable stuff. Uh, check out Kodo if you can, if they're streaming. I'm sure their albums are on streaming. Maybe they, I hope they are. They ought to be. Or, uh, yeah, if you can find them somewhere, give Kodo a try. It's very, very fascinating stuff. I really enjoyed it, and I might actually be uh, checking out that genre and possibly even that band a little uh, more in depth. Very cool stuff. Uh, I'm not huge into world music, but uh, this is a good little uh, slice of the world music thing that I don't mind at all. And, uh, well, speaking, actually, kind of interesting that I placed this one right after Kodo, because this is kind of world music stuff, but this is an American band. One of the few bands from Portland that is actually relatively popular, they're called Pink Martini. And they do a lot of... It, it's pop music that is... Uh, I mean, they sing typically on every one of their albums. They sing in probably half a dozen different languages. I mean, you know, by the time the third track is over, you've heard English and German in one song, um, Portuguese from Brazil in another song, and, you know, they've got you know, French, and I think there's actually a Japanese language song on here. But uh, this album, Get Happy, is an amazing, fantastic album. I really enjoyed it, and I got this one for $4. And actually, I did pick up, and now that I think of it, two of their albums, and but this was like two months ago, maybe a month ago, uh, in the freebies, on the freebie, freebie shelf. And I've ha had one of their albums from back uh, in 2014. I picked it up. It was actually on my favorites list of that year. They were. They did this album with the Von Trapps, the uh, children, or or is it grandchildren of the Von Trapp family from The Sound of Music. 
that was a great album. Dream a Little Dream of Me, that was the name of it. It's fantastic. But I have yet to be disappointed by a uh, Pink Martini album. This is just a great, great album. Check out Pink Martini. If, if you're looking for something a little different, something multilingual, very cool stuff. And this, uh, this next swath of CDs here is actually from the $1 section at uh, Epic Seconds, a store downtown in downtown Eugene. The, yes, I, I thought that they had gotten rid of the $1 CD section for a couple of months, and then I realized that it had gotten moved upstairs to the newly renovated edition upstairs at the store. So fortunately for me, but unfortunately for my wallet, I've rediscovered the $1 CDs, and I've got a bunch here, as I said. First one is Martika. She was an 80s pop singer. And uh, yeah, I grew up in the 80s, mind you, and i almost completely forgotten about her. When I saw the name, it vaguely recalled a memory, but I did not remember any of her songs. So yeah, it's kind of weird for me to forget an 80s artist, but uh, hey, I did, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, this re really was not a nice refresher of my memory for Martika. One of the more popular hit singles, I think, is Toy Soldiers on this album. Uh, yeah, she, she was one of the lesser pop singers from the 80s, kind of like... Uh, well, Gloria Estefan, I mean, Gloria Estefan was really on another level, honestly, but uh, yeah, kind of like uh, Debbie Gibson or Tiffany, more along the lines of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, sure, her stuff is worth hearing if you uh, happen to check it out somewhere. Yeah. Martika, if you like 80s female pop singers. Check her out. Then a, uh, an indie rock band that I had heard of. There's a song of theirs on one of the soundtrack CDs that I have. Yay me for not taking notes. Uh, hey. I like low prep videos, what can I say? But anyway, yeah, Not A Surf is the name of this band, and I picked up actually actually three of their CDs. I've only got two here in my handy dandy rack. Uh, Let Go and The Weight Is A Gift. Very good stuff. And actually, The Weight Is A Gift is the album that had that song in question on it that was on a soundtrack. Uh, Always Love is the name of that song. That was one of their best songs. But yeah, Not A Surf is a very, very good um, indie rock band that was popular in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. Check them out. I, I recommend them. And then another band that I've really gotten into is a band called Cake. I've, I had heard of them, of course, from back in the day. They got pretty popular. Uh, they were one of the, you know, probably secondary tier of, in popularity. I found a couple of, two of their CDs, A Motorcade of Generosity and Prolonging the Magic. Very good stuff. I like it enough that it prompted me to uh, order three more of their CDs off of eBay. I got them for like two and a half bucks a piece. So and they're, they're on their way. They haven't got to me yet, but uh, I look forward to checking them out more. And actually the story with Cake is uh, riding to work one morning, I heard a song of theirs on the radio. It was, it was actually, believe it or not, it was a hip hop song, a hip hop leaning song. And, you know, I normally kind of dismiss those. They're just in one ear and out the other, but this one kind of uh, caught my ear for some reason, and so that's that's how I discovered Cake. That song is not on either of these two albums. It's on one of the albums that's on the way to me, but yeah, it caught my ear enough for me to investigate the band, and I'm kind of glad I did. They're really good stuff. And also in the $1 section, I got my first CD ever by Muse. Uh, I thought I'd just, this one was just kind of, just out of curiosity, just, just check them out. I'd heard a lot of good things about them. Uh, their album, what was it, last year? I heard was one of the lesser appreciated, I think, uh, in terms of Muse's disc discography. I have not listened to that one yet. This is actually the only one that I've listened to so far. Uh, I'll probably call some more up on streaming, but yeah. Muse, uh, pretty good stuff. Uh, this album, I think, has some socially conscious lyrics. It's kind of a concept album about uh, the dystopia that is America currently. Uh, but yeah, good stuff. I am uh, compelled to check out more of them. This next one, uh, now we're moving into the stuff that was uh, more than a dollar. This one I actually got uh, oh, with a gift card that I got at Christmas time. So these, I'm going now into the Christmas gifts portion of my uh, listening for the past month. Uh, I talked about uh, one of the CDs in this series uh, was in my sister's collection, and the other one I got uh, during Skip's going at a business sale, and I was mentioning in my uh, Final Days of Skip's video that I was going to be looking for the third volume in this series. This is Masters of the Guitar. I finally managed to pick this one up. Yeah, I had Masters of the Keyboard and Masters of the Saxophone were the other two, so now I've got a complete set. Yeah, Good stuff here. Uh, it's got uh, George Benson, Phil Upchurch, Joe Beck, uh, Grant Green, Gabor Jabo, John McLaughlin, a bunch of good stuff. There is a John McLaughlin who is a pop singer and he's different than John McLaughlin, the jazz guitarist. So, And then uh, we're coming to one that uh, I mentioned in my Canada Week video. I had, The only CD that I had of theirs at the time was a Greatest Hits CD, 
And so I had one of their albums on my Amazon wish list for uh, Christmas, and my friend Mark down in San Diego got it for me. Thank you, Mark. And uh, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, was the one that I got was Pretty Together by Sloan. So I now officially have Sloan CDs in my discography. And yes, I like this one so much that it actually prompted me to... I actually found this one at Epic Seconds. They actually had it there for four bucks. Action Packed, the other, another Sloan CD. And I actually kind of like Action Packed a little bit more than Pretty Together. So, but yeah, both very, very good albums, excellent albums. I will be exploring Sloan more in their discography. So <clears throat> adding another cool, great Canadian band to my collection. And then... Uh, these next two were uh, Christmas gifts from my friend Noah. Thank you, Noah. Appreciate it. Uh, this was one that uh, one of the first ones that he actually, I think, the first one that he in reviewed on his channel. So that was the significance of it. And I had never picked it up, but I always had it on my list because I watched his review. Then I listened to clips online, and it had been on my mental wish list ever since. I'd never gotten around to picking it up. Dream Car, their self-titled album. And it's actually really, really cool, very 80s stuff, so I really like it. Uh, I, was, I was glad that he uh, picked this one up for me. It was uh, very, very much appreciated. And uh, so, yeah, if you have not checked out Dream Car, check them out. Very, very good stuff. And then the other one was uh, another one, uh, one of his favorite bands, actually. And it's an album that he had talked about uh, at length. Uh, in his channel. He actually did a review of it, and I also think he did an Album Diaries video about it. It is Songs of Experience by U2. So, and I was, uh, I only had a few of U2's albums, uh, some mostly their earlier stuff. And I mean, U2 has never been one of my favorite bands. They're okay. It, they're kind of like, uh, I would pick up an album of theirs if I saw it and could afford it and was in the mood for it. So, so, but I was very, very uh, appreciative to get this one. This is a great album. And uh, I also decided to, uh, I enjoyed it enough that uh, a couple weeks later I decided to pick up its uh, predecessor or semi-companion volume, Songs of Innocence, which I also enjoyed. And uh, this one actually has one of Noah's favorite songs on it, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm not confusing those. Yeah, uh, but yeah, a couple of very, very good U2 albums to add to my discography. This makes five U2 albums that I have, so cool stuff. And then a couple, uh, rounding out this list today is a couple of CDs from another very good friend of mine that I found through YouTube. Uh, first one is one that I did not think I was going to enjoy nearly as much as I did. It is The Heist by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Very good stuff. Uh, I mean, I had, of course, heard their single, uh, Thrift Shop, and thought, eh, it's okay. You know, of course, that was back when, before I really got into hip-hop, or, well, really as far as I have gotten into hip-hop, which is not hugely. But yeah, good stuff. Um, you know, the only drawback, a very minor drawback, is that this is the censored, the clean version, so I will be on the lookout for the uh, uncensored version, because as much as I would be okay without the explicit words in lyrics, in my opinion, it it messes with, it compromises the artist's original vision. So that's more of the more problem that I have with censored albums. But uh, yeah, very, very good album. I am glad you turned me on to it. Thank you so much, my friend, who shall remain nameless, because I think he kind of wanted to remain nameless. And his other gift to me was another one that was very appreciated. Uh, Fallout Boy from Under the Cork Tree. Good album. Very good stuff. And of course, you know, again, as it, as with Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, I had heard the song uh, Sugar We're Going Down. Great song. One of the best songs of the 2000s, in my opinion. But yeah, I was able to uh, check that out uh, for the first time in depth uh, and really, really appreciate it. So uh, thank you. You know who you are for these two. I uh, really, really appreciate them. Uh, was very, very happy to add those to my collection. And just like that, we've come to the end of my monthly playlist playlist for January. So uh, I hope you liked this video, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.